Okay, so why don't we try using this Lunt Zoom Eye piece? We're gonna try it out on the Takahashi Sky, just on some of the daytime stuff. And let's see how it performs. Now I'm just holding the cell phone to the eyepiece. I'm not even using a camera adapter. And it actually looks pretty good. Now, of course, because I'm holding it, I'm shaking. It seems to be performing fairly well for a zoom eyepiece. Normally, I don't always like the zoom eyepieces. Now, this camera adapter just does not fit so I wasn't able to place it on here. Maybe on my other one, it has a bigger hole opening. I could probably work on that one. But the, so far for the trees, the daytime stuff, uh, you know, if you want to zoom in, zoom out, it's pretty good. This Pacific telescope has a very small focus, so dual speed would work better. Let me see how it looks like on the sun is out right now. And um, let's put the solar telescope on it and see how the zoom works there. You know, it's, it's not bad. I still think that all zoom eyepieces have more narrow of a field of view than a traditional eyepiece, that's for sure. But, you know, going from, you know, zooming in, it's actually, Fairly good, a little tweak of the focus. But I think so far from all the zoom eyepieces that I've tried, I mean, this one is more expensive. I mean, I, I have tried the Teleview 3 to 6 zoom, which is a high power zoom. And I also like 3 to 8 zoom. So for high, high powers, those are good. Uh, I, you know, the Mead and the Celestron zooms are okay, but this is much better. So I still, in general, I've tried a few SV Boney zooms. They're okay again, but nothing. I think this is the best one so far. Let me go try it on the solar telescope. I want to see how the sun is. Because the sun has probably near perfect power from a 21, that where you can see the full sphere of the sun. But also 7.2 is probably nice and close. So let's give that a shot and then let me go get the solar test. Okay, here we go. Let's put the lights in. Let me move the camera to this side. Let's put the zoom eye piece in. Let's find the sun. And I think it should be right about there and let's make sure we're on the low power okay 21 and a half oh there we go okay and then we have to focus there we go so we can see some of that flares shooting out nice okay yeah you can definitely see probably i can fit at least two suns in this field of view oh that's a nice flare that's on there huge one today go to the other side yeah it's I mean it's still these oh wow there's some huge ones it's like shooting out of the sun like a really long one man that's cool okay so let's pump up the power I'm actually gonna go to all the way to 7.2 let me focus a tiny bit basically like flares shooting out every part of the sun, no matter where you move it. Where's that huge one? Oh, there we go. It's very dim though. It's long, but dim. But you can see it. I don't think that camera would show it. The one on the other side is, almost kind of looks like a W or something. It's kind of neat. You know what? That's pretty good. I like how it still has a decent field of view. Uh, not as good as a traditional single eyepieces or wide eyepieces, but to have an eyepiece that's good quality, that doesn't show any chromatic aberration or any aberration, is actually pretty good. So you could probably, for most people, if you go on a plane or you go traveling, this could probably be all that you need. You know, for my 21 is not specifically low, low, 
but maybe what you could do is bring like a 32 millimeter or 38 millimeter, a low power, then you can pop this one and you can go all the way from 21 to you know, 7.2. For most people, depending what your focal length is, for solar, that's probably enough. And uh, you know, for capturing most stuff. But if you do need a little bit more power, you could probably just use a two times Barlow. And I don't see why anybody would need to go any more power than that. So quality, I think, is good. It's probably, the so far, the best zoom eyepiece that I've used. Now, I know in Canada, this guy's 329 retail before tax, so that brings it up to, uh, I think, 372 or something. It's not so cheap, but uh, definitely you're, you're, you're paying for quality here. Maybe one day I'll come across a baiter or a batter, however you want to call it, and see how their zoom eyepiece compares. But for now, I think this is the best one I've tried, so I would give it a thumbs up if you want to try it. So at um, 7.2 millimeter, which is a high power, you're at 53 degree field of view. So you're looking at like a super palazzo type of thing. So field of view looks good there. Now at the 21 and a half, it's about 40. So again, a little small at the low power, but again, bring maybe a 32 millimeter uh, with a 52 degree field of view to get a lower power wider field of view and then pop this guy in. Or maybe that's enough. Maybe for a lot of you guys, that could be all that you need. Anyway guys, so I like it. So I'm giving it a thumbs up. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. If you know anybody getting in the hobby uh, uh, or anybody on the forums, they ask about a question like this, please share my link and channel. And why not you? Why not me?